Happy Sabbath, everyone. Sabbath. Welcome, welcome to those of you here in uh, the building and to those of you online. We welcome you to Plantation Seventh-day Adventist Church. Uh, we are here to worship our great God, our sovereign God, the ruler of the universe. And I want to invite you to stand with me as we welcome his presence here. And as we get started with our service, amen. amen. Please bow your heads with me. Eternal Father and ever wise God in heaven, Lord, we just want to thank you for the opportunity to be here, Lord, in this space, to worship and praise your holy name. God, we give you honor and glory this morning because you're worthy. You are worth it, Father. Thank you so much for who you are. And thank you so much for calling us, Father, from darkness to light. We invite your presence here this morning, Father. Bathe our hearts with your love. Father, fill us with your Holy Spirit. I pray that not one person here would leave the same way they've come in, Lord, but that they'd leave here changed and transformed and drawn a little bit closer to you, Father. I pray that you'd bless the service, Father. And Lord, as we lift your name up in praise, we pray that the blessings will flow. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. I have a question for you. Would you be free from your burden of sin? Do you know there was wonder working power in the blood of Jesus? How many of you know that this morning? Amen. And I want you to sing with me. Power in the blood. Come on, let's sing. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood. Would you be free from your passion and There's pride? Power. There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's high. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood. Would you do service for Jesus, your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily His praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. Sing the power. There is power, power, wonder-working power. power, healing power, amen. Is our God great? Yes. 
We're going to sing about his greatness, his goodness. Has he made you glad today? Is that a smile I'm seeing under your masks? <laughs> Un listen, God has made us all glad because, listen, he has promised you in a life of eternity with him. We're going to have a big party when we get to heaven. And I want you guys to sing this song with us. It's a new song to the church, but we're going to sing it for you a little bit. And I'm promising you, you're going to get it. The song says, I'll give thanks to the Lord. Even if you don't know, you can do this. Yeah. Yes, yes, there you go. Oh, oh, oh. Listen to, listen, say. I'll give thanks to you, Lord, and sing praise to your name, O Most High. I'll declare your love in the morning and your faithfulness by night for you oh lord have made me glad i will sing for joy at the works of your hand and rejoice in what you have done i'll give thanks, I'll give thanks to you lord to you lord and sing praise to, and your, sing praise name. to your name almost high i'll declare your, your love in the morning and your faithfulness by night for you oh lord have made me glad i will sing for joy at the works of your hands and rejoice in what you have done and rejoice in what you have done Trust in you, Lord, in you, Lord, for I know, for I know that you're on my side. I can rest, I won't be defeated. Lord, you are the strength of my life. For you, oh Lord, and make me glad. I will sing for joy at the works of your hands and rejoice in what you have done. Rejoice in what you have done. Oh Lord, how great are your works. Oh Lord, how great are your works. Oh Lord, how great are your works. You have made me glad. Oh Lord, how great are your works.
You've made me glad, oh God. This next song is actually also entitled, Made Me Glad, because our God is a good God. I don't know about you, we're not gonna get tired. I know some of you might have just gotten a little tired out just now. But we're gonna go to a place, if you're a believer like me, where we'll never grow tired. We'll never grow weary. There'll be no more death there, no more crying. Isn't that a place you wanna go? Look at what's happening in this world. We need to find that place in Jesus and God today where we never get tired, we never grow weary. God is an awesome God. We worship you, Father. Forever we'll worship you. Join in the scene. I will not sing. I will not be moved. And I'll see of the Lord. Of the Lord. You are my sheep, my, strength, my strength, my portion, my portion deliverer, my shelter. shelter.
someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for our very present help. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Praise God. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Good morning, church. For those who are in-house and those who are joining us online, we thank God that we can assemble ourselves together as we seek to connect with God. It's good to see you. Those who are members, welcome. And those who are guests, welcome. We hope that as you worship God with us today, that you will enjoy His blessings. For those uh, uh, watching online, let me just say here, you're missing out. You're missing out on the in-person dynamic. There is nothing like worshiping together in person. Come on, say amen. And want to remind you, you can go ahead and register for our services. Uh, if you don't get a chance to do that online, you can do that at the desk. We ask you when you come uh, to worship that you be mindful of your neighbor. I know for some folks, wearing a mask is against their religion. But for the love of your neighbor, please wear a mask. Amen. Because I know it may be against your religion, but because you love your neighbor, ask you just to wear a mask. One more uh, notice, as you know, next Sabbath will be an extra special Sabbath in the life of our church as we seek to, to affirm what God has affirmed uh, some years ago in the, in the commissioning service of our own Pastor Jennifer Hernandez. Amen. Uh, next Sabbath, the folks uh, from up north, Orlando, will be here as we join in in affirming what God has done and what God is doing in her life. We thank God for her ministry. This time, I'm going to ask uh, the elders who are here just to join me along with our first elder, Elder Mozart and Herlange. I hope I got that right. And the family, please join us here as we seek to affirm uh, their ministry together. As some of you know, it was during the pandemic that, that Elder Mozart was chosen to serve our church as first elder. And so we, we never got a chance to, to affirm him in front of the congregation. I've been here since April, and I must say uh, succinctly, he's a good guy. We, we've had some very good conversations. And I thank, <laughs> give it some time. <laughs> uh, we, 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 we converse a lot as we talk about the vision here uh, at the church and the mission of expanding the gospel to those who are lost. And I thank God for Elder Mozart and his family. Amen. The heart of service that he has. And we just thought uh, we would affirm him uh, today. We have some gifts. He did not know of this uh, until the first service, that, there, that this is the result of a grand conspiracy that took place behind his back to ensure that we can affirm our elder. We have some gifts, and I'm going to allow the folks to make the presentation. And I understand uh, his, his, his dad is on hand. Amen. Could you join us, dad? Uh, it would be such a beautiful thing. Uh, uh, Pastor, uh, come, come and join us. Uh, along with your wife, if she can come, come ahead. His mother is also here. Uh, and, and by the way, he had no idea we were doing this. I think he told me a brother was in town and the, the family was getting together, something like that. And so uh, they are in tow. Had no idea uh, we planned to, we planned to ambush him like this. But we want to thank God. Uh, and I say this sincerely for his heart of ministry, his heart of wanting to see the kingdom of God expand here uh, at the plantation. And we, we, we thank God that we can be working alongside each other. You know, as a pastor, it's one of those key persons uh, for, for you and your ministry to ensure that you, you, you have a first elder with whom you can not only communicate, but with whom uh, someone who has the same passion of ensuring that uh, ministry, ministry is done in the local church. So we have some presentations. Uh, who do I turn it over to? Go ahead, uh, Mike.
So um, we got some gifts here for our dear elder. But we want to start with a special person because he believes this is about him. You see, we get to work with him, talk with him, but we are lucky because we don't live with him. <laughs> so it takes a really special person to put up, I mean, to support him. <laughs> And because we know that you are praying for your husband, love him unconditionally. All this time that he spent in meeting and, and, and doing what God has called him to do, you, you, you have been an amazing woman. So we want to recognize you and thank you for all that you do. Amen. Absolutely, Halange. You are his backbone and we're so grateful. And on behalf of the entire church, the elders, leadership here, we want to present you with this beautiful bouquet. Okay. Amen. And a little token of our love right here. And you can... okay. This is for our dear friend, an elder. And this is for your daughters. If, if you see the, the person, and they're always busy. Um, Alex is always on camera or, or, or she's coordin coordinating the person or singing. So the Persina family is always serving God. So we, we thank you for everything you do. May God bless you, keep you, and just enlarge your territory. Everything that you do, we just pray that we continue to bless you and keeping you loving with this loving care. Amen. Thank you so much. Elder Mike, we, we want to pray together and just ask you just to bow your heads and if you are able just to reach your hand out as we reaffirm God's call upon this family's life. Father God, we thank you so much for loving us. We thank you, Lord, that you can use us, mere mortals, to do such an important work. We thank you for the Persina family, the way in which you have used them to expand the kingdom. We thank you for their service, of their time, the commitment of their resources, and of their gifts to the work of reaching lost men and women. We pray that you continue to love through them, you continue to provide and bless others through them, and may as we work together, we'll all have the joy of meeting Jesus in peace, we ask. In his name, amen and amen. Uh, thank you so much, guys. God bless you. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for bringing us to church. Bless that we will learn something about you today. In your holy precious name, amen. All right, so how many of you guys are familiar with the story of Naaman? One, two? Okay. All right, so oh, some of you guys know, but some of you guys don't know. So just to refresh... Naaman was a commander of an army, 
or he was a commander a general in his nation. So he had an important role. But one day he came down with leprosy. And in case you guys don't know what leprosy is, it's a disease that makes your skin white and uncomfortable. And the way that they handled it at that time, they didn't really have a cure or anything. So they sent people outside of the city and that's how they handled it because they didn't know how to cure it. It was really contagious. So with Naaman having his high position and everything, um, he really wanted to get better. So a servant girl who worked for him came up and said, you should see the prophet Elisha because he can heal you. So that's what he did. So Naaman went to the prophet Elisha and asked him to heal him. And he, Elisha said that God can heal you if you go dip yourself in the Jordan River seven times. So that's where Naaman went to do. But in case you guys aren't familiar, the Jordan River is a really dirty river, and it's not really somewhere you want to be dipping in or bathing in or anything. But Naaman, he really wanted to be healed, so he listened to God's instructions and started dipping in the river. So after the first couple of times of dipping in the river, there was no change in anything. So you might, he might have been skeptical or might have been like, this isn't working, it's dirty, nothing's happening. But he decided to listen to God's instructions and continue. So he did. And after the seventh time, he came back up and the leprosy was completely gone. It was a miracle. His skin was clean and he was happy. And he went up to Elisha and he was like, thank you, thank you so much for healing me. Have all these gifts and everything out of gratitude. Thank you so much. And Elisha said, I didn't heal you. It was God who healed you. So I won't accept any of these gifts. Go back, go back. So Naaman was like, all right, I'll take my stuff and go back. Thank you, thank you so much. Praise God. So Elisha had someone who worked for him, and his name was Gazi. And he heard that Naaman had come by with all his gifts for being healed and everything, and that Elisha didn't accept them, that he went back and took them with him. But Gehazi wanted the gifts, so he went back and went after Naaman and lied and said that, uh, Elisha had some uh, guests over, and so he needed some clothes and some silver for the guests. And Naaman, being healed and better and grateful, didn't have any problem, and he was like, okay, okay, here, take the gifts. So Gehazi took the gifts, and he went back to his place and left them there, since he lied and everything. And then he went to Elisha, and Elisha said, where did you go? And Gehazi said, I didn't go anywhere. And Elisha said, I know you went somewhere. You went, you went after Naaman to get the gifts. And that wasn't good because God had said for them not to accept any gifts because he had healed him. So the result of his actions was that God cursed him with Naaman's leprosy. And it was almost instantaneous. And he said that his family for the rest of the generations would get or be prone to leprosy too. So in this story, you have Naaman who followed God's instructions and dipped in the river a certain amount of times, just like he was supposed to, and was healed. He got the rewards. And then you have Gehazi who didn't follow God's instructions and suffered the consequences. God only wants what's best for us, and that's why he gives us our, his instructions, and we need to follow them so we don't suffer the consequences. So I want you guys to remember that as you go throughout your week, to listen to God's instructions and follow them well. Would any of you want to pray to end? All right, I can pray to end. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this week, and thank you for this day, and thank you for guiding and protecting us and keeping us safe. Uh, please help today to continue to be a good day, and please help us to listen to your instructions. And thank you for everything. In your name I pray, amen. For our ministry in action, I'm going to ask uh, Canute to join me here along with, uh, is it Canute and Michael, are both of you coming? Oh, or Elder Mo, yes. As some of you know, 
the end of this month, next month, July, we'll be having a very special event, and we want to just give you some information to help you to appreciate that's more than just event. And so I have these three persons here, and hopefully they can give, they can give me some answers as to what is the main purpose, what are we seeking to achieve, Canute, with this health ministry fair? Uh, church family, what we are hoping to achieve, you know, we've been talking about this paradigm shift for the church, um, you know, and we are trying to get out in the community and meet people, and we're doing this community health fair and expo where we're going to be able to get out in the community and meet people and cater to their needs. Uh, can you tell me, uh, Ella Barbara, what are some activities that we have planned for, for the day? We have a myriad of activities, but as, as, as Knut says, the main purpose is to get out in the community and reach the community. So the activities, we're going to have activities planned for the kids. We're having um, rock, the rock climbing wall, bounce houses, face painting. But importantly, we will have opportunity where you can learn about health and the laws of health and be interactive. We'll have diabetic screening. We're going to have heart screening, different things that you can use that you can... Um, um, improve your health. So uh, it's a family fun day. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, Elamo, I know in, in preparation for the day, we've had to do some ask and get some authorization from the city. Could you just give a quick feedback as to how, how, how that is going and what has been the response of the city thus far? Well, the, res the city has been very receptive to our goal here, which is to have this great health fair to reach out into the community. While we had to seek um, permits and fill out a bunch of different forms, they have been excited about this event that we're bringing to the city that's going to impact each and every member. So the city's excited, and we're hoping you guys will be excited to join us on the July 31st for this event. All right. Could you tell us uh, quickly, Canute, who are the persons involved? How many persons do we need to be involved? Can I get involved, and how? Okay, so we are looking for at least 100 volunteers. Folks, we are, we are planning this event, and we need every one of you. I'm here representing health ministry, but guess what? This is not a health ministry event. Yes. It's a church-wide event. We want everyone to be involved. Doctors, nurses, greeters, whoever you are, you can be a part and of I this And I understand that there will be training for those who volu volunteer, those who... Uh, want to get involved, that training will be provided? We're going to be providing lunch on July 9th and July 23rd. We're going to be training you. We're going to be preparing you for this event. So yeah, you'll be well trained yeah. and you'll be fed. Come out on yeah, July 9th yeah. and July 23rd. Right. I, I couldn't help noticing that you mentioned the lunch before the training. <laughs> I think that may be uh, intentional. Uh, just quickly, Barbara, could you say something about, there's a program I think we'll be sharing there called New Start. Could you say something just a bit about that? Yes, new start, exactly as it stands for. It's about a new start on your health, a new start on your life. And it looks at nutrition, it looks at water, it looks at natural things that you can use that has been proven so many years. I mean, the Seventh-day Adventist way of health has been studied and has been proven to be um, the key way for restoring your health. So we'll be discussing new start, which is all about using God's natural gifts amen. in restoring your health. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, thank you so much. We want to pray f about this. And folks, they're signing up folks there at the, uh, at the front. Uh, please get involved. We'll ensure there's training. Remember that this will be our opportunity as a church to connect with community and to serve our community. And so in prayer, Father, we thank you for this initiative. We thank you for the leaders. We pray that you'll give us the spirit to get involved so we can make an impact here in the city of Plantation, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, church family. Happy Sabbath. 
It's time to worship the Lord with our tithes and offering and our gifts. Hosea chapter 8, verse 7. For they have sown the wind, and they shall reap the whirlwind. This law of sowing and reaping is established in Hosea chapter 8, applies to every areas of life. For example, you plant one mango seed, and when it bears, you reap many mangoes. Each act is a seed planted in all characters that will multiply in favor of the rewards of heaven or eternal death. Little sins have big consequences, and small acts of kindness have great rewards. As we give of ourselves to the Lord, let us come let it come from a heart of gratitude and love and watch the Lord multiply his goodness in us. Bring all the tithes, offerings, and gifts into the storehouse of the Lord and prove him today. Let us pray. Father and God, again we come before you thanking you for the gift of life, thanking you for love, health, and strength, thanking you for providing for us. And as we provide for us and we give to each other, give back the blessing to each other, May you bless it with thanksgiving, we pray in Jesus' name. Praise God, everyone. I'm going to invite you to stand where you are and join us as we continue to worship. Um, I was looking over some statistics, and uh, it, it, it dawned on me because I kind of crunched the numbers a little bit. It said that the number one mental disorder in the world today is anxiety disorder. And I don't know if anybody, and I'm not sure if you even want to raise your hand, has dealt with anxiety. If you've dealt with anxiety, just let's go ahead and raise our hand. And I want you to look around a little bit. You're not alone. Other people have dealt with it. People are dealing with it right now. The beautiful thing about our God is he's given us a cure. When you go to Matthew, and I'm going to take it down to chapter 6, and you jump down to verse 25. He tells us not to be worried about your life as to what you will eat or what you will drink, nor for your body as to what you will put on is not life more than food and the body more than clothing. And then in verse 26, my birth verse, 626, says, Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor do they reap or heap into barns, but your heavenly Father, he feeds them. When you look at the birds outside and sometimes they get on my nerves because they, they I open the door with a bag of groceries or something guess who's right there the birds right they know where their food's coming from and they don't worry so why are we who are made in the image of Jira himself always so worried about where we're gonna get that provision he is the provider he's our provider and I'm just gonna invite you guys to sing this song Jaira with us if you believe and know like I do that God provides for us and he loves you with an, a reckless love a love that we don't deserve to be honest he knows everything you've done he knows everything I've done and he loves us anyway amen Amen. Let's just sing today. Mm -hmm. I'll never be more loved than I am right now. Wasn't holding you up, so there's nothing I can do to let you down. It doesn't take a trophy to make you proud. 
proud and I'll never be more loved than I am right now mm -hmm. going through a storm but I won't go down I hear your voice carried in the rhythm of the wind to call me out you would cross an ocean so I Come on, all over this place. Let's say, Chira, you, Chira, you are enough. If you know to be your provider, say, lift it up. Chira, you are enough. Say, I will be, I will be content in every, in every circumstance. Cause you are Chira, you are enough. Yeah, yeah. Is more than enough. Hey, forever enough. Always enough. Always more than enough. Come on, join us and say, I don't want to forget how I feel right now on the mountaintop. I can see so clear what it's all about. Come on, sing, say, Stay by my side when the sun goes. Right now. I know what you've spoken. I'm already loved more than I can imagine. Come on, is this you today? And that is enough. Come on, is this you today? Let's sing it and sing it again. I'm already loved. I'm already loved. I'm already chosen.
you take care of me Lord you love me more than I love myself if he dresses the lilies with beauty and splendor how much more will he clothe you how much more dresses a lilies with beauty and splendor how much more will he clothe you how much more will he clothe you if he watches over every sparrow how much more does he love you how much more does he love you if he dresses a lilies much more will he clothe you? How much more will he clothe you? If he watches over every sparrow, how much more does he love you? How much more does he love you? If he dresses the lilies with beauty and splendor, how much more will he clothe you? more will he clothe you if he watches over every sparrow how much more does he love you 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 how much more does he love you? 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 Does he love you? Does he love you? Think or imagine according to his power working in us. It's more than enough. More than you ask, think or imagine. According to his power, working in us, it's more than enough. It's more than you ask, think, or imagine. According to his power, working in us, it's more than enough. It's more than you ask, think, or imagine. According to his power. Church. You are enough. And I will be. I will be content in every circumstance. Chira, you are enough. And I will be content in every circumstance. Chira.
Praise the Lord. I will be content in every circumstance. Why? Because he is more than enough. More than enough. I don't know what your situation is. I'm not certain what you're going through, but I can tell you that God is more than enough for your circumstances. More than enough. And that, that goes right into the text that I was impressed to go to this morning. And that text is Psalms uh, 63, the 63rd division of Psalm, verses 3 to 5. And I want you to listen to this closely. It says, because your love is better than life. I'm going to read that again. Because your love is better than life, my lips shall praise you. Thus I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness. And my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. He's more than enough. And your soul will be satisfied. But here is the key. His love is better than life. So I want to encourage you now. I'm not sure of the burden that's on your heart. Uh, I, I don't know if you're struggling with a child, if you are worried about financial matters. I'm not sure whether or not you are lonely and anxious. Because many are lonely and anxious. But I want to tell you right now, God's love can fill you. And it's better than life. So if you have any of those burdens on your heart or there's just something you want to praise God for or thank Him for His love, I'm going to ask you to come down and pray with me. Bring that down. Now, I know we typically have cards. We don't have that right now. But if you want to write it on a paper, bring it, put it in an open Bible, you could do that. Also, if you just have it on your heart, just come forward. If you're watching online, take this time to just... Breathe that prayer to God as we pray together uh, for Him to satisfy us. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we come before you this morning and we are so grateful that we have the opportunity to praise your name. We have the opportunity to say thank you for all that you have done for us. And I just want to thank you for the praise team, for the song selection, because it couldn't have been a more perfect song that says no matter what the circumstances and as I am praying here in this room with so many different people with so many different circumstances I know some of the circumstances seem overwhelming to some of us but dear father the songwriter says you are more than enough your words in the psalm says your love is better than life and that we will be satisfied by your love Dear Father, I want to thank you for the time when we thought that all was going to come crashing down. And somehow you worked a miracle out that we were able to get out of that situation. Lord, I want to thank you for your grace when we know that we have gone, we, we did something that was not right. We, we, we neglected you. you we, we went astray. The, the sin problem was there. But Lord, your grace is sufficient for us. And you gave us um, your love that covers the multitude of sin. Yes, Dear Father, even as we pray and we recognize your greatness and your love and how much you care for us, we still have things on our hearts that are burdening us. There is someone here in the hearing of my voice now that feeling a sense of loneliness and they could be in a room full of people 
They could be on social media talking to, to, to hundreds of followers or whatever, but yet still they feel lonely, empty, and wondering, where do I go from here? Nothing can fill this feeling that I have. Their Father, I pray for that person right now. I pray for the dark cloud that, that will be removed. I pray that the emptiness will be filled and that they will find you and they will sense your love wrapping them, um, wrapping them up right now. They will sense that you are there and that your love is more than enough and that you can satisfy all what they're looking for. Help them to run to you and not to other things. Their Father, there are some before right now that are struggling. For years, they've been praying for their, children, their child or their children. Their children now are young adults or they're teenagers or and no matter what, they've been struggling with the same problem, whether it's physical, mental, whether it's going astray, away from God and uh, struggling with maybe substance abuse, whatever that circumstance may be. And you're praying for your child over and over and you see no result. Dear Father, help us to realize that you're an on-time God and that you love them more than we can ever imagine. And you will come through for them and that your love is more than enough for them. Dear Father, I pray that child will find you now and will seek you, that mother that's praying, that father that's praying, that their prayers will be answered today. Dear Father, I pray for those who are grieving. They have lost someone and no matter what happened, they can't fill that void of the loss of that loved one. Dear Father, comfort them today. Comfort, help them to sense through us through members and brothers and sisters in the community and, and others around that you will work through them. Send that right person right now to say the right words or to do the right deed or to just be there for them so that they can say, we had an encounter with God. Lord, please comfort those who are mourning now. And their Father, there are those who are worried financially. Things have been okay, but they can see in the horizon. Their rent is going to go up by $900 a month. Their, their, their job is looking for ways to cut. They're in a situation now where their business is going down. And they're like, Lord, how do I make it? How do I do it? Help them to know that you're the God that provided yesterday. You are going to provide. You're providing today and you will provide tomorrow. Give them that faith, Lord, to believe. And their Father, I pray finally for the one who is going to pre um, speak the word today. You have given him a message. I know it's a timely message, and it's not a message generally just for everybody. It's a message for this church at this time, for every person that's sitting in this pew right now. I pray that you will speak your words through um, CJ, Lord. I pray that you will be with his family and cover him. And no matter what the circumstances, he will continue to serve you as he seek to represent you in this world today. So dear Father, at the end of it, I pray that we all will leave here knowing full well that your love is more than enough for us and we will choose your way rather than our way. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Chira, you are enough. Chira, you are enough. I will be, I will be content in every circumstance. In every circumstance. Cause you are Chira, you are enough. Our speaker today is Pastor C.J. Cousins. Uh, this is home for him. Currently, he serves our church. Amen. We, currently, he serves our church in the Potomac Conference, Potomac Conference there in uh, Maryland, Virginia area. 
and he's also serving as the interim pastor at the Vienna SDA Church in North Virginia. The family is here in tow. Uh, thank you so much, CJ, for consenting to come to share the word. I know God has a word uh, for us through you. I'm hoping and praying that we'll receive the word and may the same spirit that was with you in, pre in preparation be with you now in your presentation. May you be blessed. good to be back home. Amen? All right, so before we go to work, the preacher's heart is full and his Bible is on fire. So I'm going to need you to take out your Bibles, whether print or electronic, because really and truly he didn't come to see CJ, he came to see Jesus. We want him to be exalted, we want him to be lifted up, we want him to be heard. I cannot uh, move forward without first thanking um, James and the church and Pastor Rose for the invitation to come and the privilege to speak at this pulpit. This is my home. This is my, my church home where I grew up. I left here in the fall of 2006 and uh, I've been away in Georgia and in Michigan and Maryland and now in Northern Virginia. But this has always been home for me. So the really and truly this is a homecoming. And so I'm excited to be here. I've seen so many faces, I don't have time to name all of them. And I love, by the way, that I'm hearing young people right now because it tells me that this church is growing. Amen? And my kids are going to be chiming in very soon anyway. So that's all right with me. But I'm happy to be here. I really, really am. Those of you watching online, I want to greet you and thank you for joining us today as well. But why don't we go ahead and pray? We want to ask God to be with us as we get into his word. And we really want what he has in store for us, the needs that we have brought to this worship experience to be met as we go and engage in his word now. So let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you, thank you, thank you in advance for what you're going to do as a result of this word. Already I know, Father, because of all the spiritual warfare that has preceded this moment to prevent me from actually being here to present at this moment, clearly you have something that you want to say to somebody sitting here today or watching right now online. This is a moment that you have ordained and I thank you in advance that, you've used, that you're using an imperfect vessel to communicate a beautiful, perfect and loving God. Right now, we are asking that your beautiful, rich, indescribable character of love will come through, through the text and that that love will be revealed most vividly and clearly in your son, Jesus Christ, him crucified and risen for us. And that Holy Spirit, you will bring that home to our hearts and allow it to fuse into our lives and flow out to those around us in our sphere of influence. We want to be those that love God, love people, and make disciples. Help us to be real conduits of that experience. We thank you in advance, Father. Have your way now in Jesus' name. Let everyone say, amen. It was a really joy and privilege to watch her as she would serve and lead in the serving of the children of our church, particularly as the adventurer's director. But I could not understand for the life of me why, Kathy, she just could not seem to get along with people. She just couldn't seem to get along with people, particularly in the church, those that were parents. And I, I was trying to wrap my head around this because she's so good at what she does, so organized, so professional, so just life-giving to what was going on with our, with our youth and our children particularly. And then I, I kind of discovered an experience that happened with her and the parents where she organized a very thorough, well-put-together manual when it came to the adventurers. And when they would have questions they want to ask her directly, she would say, go check the manual. That's why I put it together. I mean, you don't need to talk to me when everything is right there in the book. And they felt a little kind of put back by that. And then I discovered also being a rookie pastor at the time, I've been pastoring now for nine years, being a rookie pastor at the time, I discovered that this had been a pattern with her, just not getting along and having some conflict with people in other churches, maybe two or three churches prior to the one that I was at at the time, and that this was a pattern and then one day she was there meeting with us, the pastoral staff of the church, just having casual conversation. And then finally, when we brought this up, 
She just came right out and said it. She said, listen, I just want to come here, serve the children of the church as the adventurer director, and go home. I don't want to have to engage and nurture relationships and manage and steward relationships. I just want to come. In essence, in essence, what she's saying, family, is she's saying, I want to be here to focus on the task and not the people. And maybe you've experienced or witnessed something like this, or maybe, maybe I'm talking to someone who's actually been like this, and maybe all of us at some level can, re can relate to that experience. But here's the thing. This type of mindset, it could be that it was someone that just doesn't want to engage in relationships and they're having conflict. They don't know how to manage those relationships well. They're not to love well. But it could also be that you've experienced someone that's very gifted, very talented, but also they feel like their gift is better than everybody else's gift. Their gift is the one that needs more prime time. It needs to be more visible, right? Or maybe they feel like it's some kind of competition when it comes to their gift and everybody else's, right? And this is problematic, church. You know why? Because this is one of the reasons why a lot of churches experience a lot of hurt, woundedness, and division. And this is what's on the pastoral heart of Paul. As he writes to the church in Corinth, in Greece. Now, if you're at all familiar with the story of Scripture and the book of Corinth and that church, you'll, you'll understand very quickly, if, you, if you're familiar with that book, that he's dealing with a church that's jacked up and messed up in all kinds of ways. This church has dealt with sexual immorality and incest, and it's, it's, he's dealing in this book with people that are kind of getting a little more selfish and self-righteous, and, 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 and they are also very gifted, but they're also very divided. And he's now here writing, addressing one of the particular areas that they're divided in, in the passage that we're about to take a look at now. Now, when, if you're like me growing up, I would read the Bible, particularly the writings of Paul, particularly, where it seems like he's all over the place, right? And you would conclude one chapter, and you would think, oh, well, he just concluded a thought. So the next chapter, he's now going to move into another thought. And then the next chapter, he's going to move into another thought, right? But what you'll discover is that the Bible, when it was put together, the Holy Spirit led, but human beings were involved, and they, did, in, in order to help us have a little bit ease of read and reference, they gave us chapter divisions and verses and punctuation that was not there in the original text. Are you with me? And so the thought that Paul introduces as we now get ready to dive into 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the preacher should have given you enough time to get there by now, right? He is going to continue his thought beyond chapter 12 into 13, where we're going to be today, and He'll continue it and conclude it in chapter 14. What's the thing that's on his heart? Well, when I was growing up and reading 1 Corinthians chapter 12 particularly, I thought that his primary subject was spiritual gifts. That's what he's dealing with in chapter 12. Then he's going to leave spiritual gifts, and he's going to move into something else that we're going to talk about in a second. But what you'll discover is that Paul has one complete thought, one true north, from chapters 12 to 14. And he is talking about spiritual gifts, yes, in chapters 12 to 14, but the primary reason he's dealing with spiritual gifts is because he has a deeper subject to address. And that is our oneness, listen, our oneness, our unity, and our equality as the body of Christ. It's from this context that he moves into the subject of spiritual gifts. Why? People were in the church thinking that their gift, there's a Jamaican way of saying this, that may not be the most appropriate for this setting right now. But some people say your poop can make patty. Somebody understood what I just said. All right. Please forgive me if you didn't understand the context. Hopefully I can receive forgiveness and grace later and explain that context. But the idea there is that you think your, your gift is more special than everybody else's. And, and it's causing division in the church. Now, I know I'm dealing with a church here. This is my home church, okay? I know I'm dealing with a church, and I'm watching it happen right now, and I was so, my heart is so full from seeing the first service and experiencing it. But there's gifted people in this church serving in a variety of ministries with different kinds of spiritual gifts. And so maybe you've asked this question. And here's our question for today that we're going to consider. What is the best way for us to preserve our oneness while serving with a variety of spiritual gifts. What's the best way? 
Why? Why am I asking that question? Well, because Paul, concluding chapter 12, he says that I'm now, I just talked about how to stay unified, and I just talked about spiritual gifts and how that plays in, and and he, he first out says that the Holy Spirit is the source of your spiritual gifts. He's the one that's moving and working through all of your gifts, right? One spirit, multiple gifts and ministries, yes? But then he goes on to say, you are one body, which is that word one, comes up over and over and over again. The idea is unity. You're one body with a variety of unique gifts. And then he'll say, but here's how you guys need to interact while you're exercising those gifts. You need to care for one another because you need each other. You need to care for one another because you need each other. And I'm going to say parenthetically here, I said it in the first service, I'll say it again. This is the reason why in Hebrews chapter 10, it says that we are not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together, i.e. in person or virtually, amen. Not in an arbitrary sense, like, hey, you got to be here, we're going to check and count, right? No, because you are a body. My finger can't do without my palm. My head can't do without the neck. You're needed. You're a part of a family. We are one. So how do we preserve it while we have all these different gifts? Well, come with me now. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Are you there? Let everybody say amen if you're there. Okay, and then if you're there, please let me know then by saying, I am here. And then if you're not asleep, please let me know by saying, I'm awake. Amen. Let's dive into the word of God. The Holy Spirit now will instruct us through Paul. Here it is. Verse number one of chapter 13, if I speak with the tongues of men, that's humanity, right? Human beings, and of angels, but do not have what? Love, I have become a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal, yes? If I have the, listen, this is unique to us now. This is very special to us. If I have the what? The gift of prophecy, and know all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith, so as to remove mountains, but do not have what? Love, I am nothing. Verse three, and if I have all, and if I give all my possessions to feed the what? The poor, that's an important ministry, amen? We have that ministry flowing out of this church, yes? And even if I surrender my body to be what? Burned. That's martyrdom. That's being like burning at the stake. But if I don't have love, it profits me nothing. In the courts of heaven, it was like, well, that was a waste. Sounds harsh, doesn't it? But Paul is elevating an excellent way. Some translations will say a more excellent way. I prefer the translations that actually bring it out that it is the most excellent way. The way of being in the world, the way of being in the body. Notice that Paul just mentioned some of the spiritual gifts. It's because why? He is continuing the same theme. He's continuing the same subject. He's talking about spiritual gifts through three chapters. He mentions speaking in tongues, speaking in other languages. He talks about the gift of prophecy. He talks about knowledge. He talks about faith. He talks about the self-sacrificing, giving to the poor, and even being a martyr. But he's saying, but if you do all of those things and you don't have love, it's meaningless. Pastor CJ, Paul, how do we preserve our oneness here at Plantation SDA? How do we preserve our oneness, our unity, our equality in the body of Christ while serving in our unique spiritual gifts. Paul lets us know, he says, listen, if you serve without love, it's meaningless. It's quiet right now. Is is, is, is that hitting somebody's pew? Is that what happened? Is that what happened? I'm just the messenger, just delivering the mail, okay? If you serve without love, the most excellent way, love being the most excellent way, then it's meaningless. And can we talk real talk this morning? It's like casual sex. It's like the act that people reduce that beautiful gift that God gave us in the garden to. When you reduce it to just an act, 
then you've robbed it of its beauty, holiness, and yes, pleasure that God originally intended for husband and wife in the safety and security of a lifelong faithful covenant love relationship. And he made that thing to be good. He made that thing to, the church needs to reclaim and redeem that word from the world because they're having a subpar experience. I'm gonna say it again, it's so good to me. And I'm married so I can testify. They're having a subpar experience of something that God made to actually reveal the intimacy and oneness in the Godhead. From eternity past, it's good. That was inclusive, and when God said he looked at everything he made, including that, and he said, ooh, yeah, that's, that's pretty good. First command Adam and Eve, be fruitful and multiply. It's good before sin. So we need to take back that language and actually present before them the beautiful thing and the context, the context by which he says it flourishes, and that's in marriage. Because when it is robbed of that beautiful context and that beautiful, yes, pleasurable and electrifying experience, come on, let all the husband and wives say amen. If you're quiet, that's all right. Just look with me straight here. We're, we're, we're all right. And, 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 and so he says, listen, when you don't have that type of experience in that context of marriage, then listen, you're having a subpar experience that's robbing you and ultimately leading you to self-destruction. And in a similar way, Jesus in Matthew chapter 7, somebody wants to go there with me really quick. Matthew chapter 7. Just go with me real quick. Matthew chapter 7. This is the heart of what Jesus is getting at in the Sermon on the Mount. He's concluding his sermon, and the praise team's about to get up, and the disciples are getting ready to greet those that come down the aisle. You follow? And as he's talking, go with me now to verse number 22. Verse number 22. Verse number what? 22, and here's what he says. He says, many will say to me in or on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not, and you hear this spiritual gift, did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name, and by the way, names in the Bible are significant of character, in your character of love, Yahweh, revealed in Christ. In your name, we cast out demons. We performed exorcisms. And in your name performed many miracles. And then he will say, I will declare to them, I never knew you. That's his point. I never knew you. Depart from me. In other words, you're not going to be happy here if we're not in love. And watch this. You who practice lawlessness, God's law Whenever you see this in the Bible, no matter what context, God's law is a revelation of God's character of love. Jesus in flesh was the law incarnate. And so God's love, when it says you, pract you who practice lawlessness, it's actually saying is you who practice lovelessness. You have closed off from your heart the ability to love well. It's not arbitrary on God. This depart from me that Jesus is saying here is not like, oh, that was one too many times. Close the gates of heaven. No. By what you've demonstrated and what's actually in your heart, which is lovelessness, you have said, I don't want to be here, and I'm going to give you what you want. We don't know each other. There's no intimacy. There's no relationship. There's no abiding in Christ as a result of the gospel. And this is why love is the excellent way. This is why when we come to the cross and we see the revelation of God revealed in Christ, we need to recognize, number one, that you can't produce the love that this excellent way is talking about. You can't produce it. It's not something you can muster. It's not like you can effort your way into it. White knuckle your way into it. Try harder. That's pointless. That's futile, or else Jesus would not have needed to come and die and rise and fill you with his spirit if you could just do it, yeah? So how do we get God's love abiding in the heart? 
Come on, be real with me, Pastor CJ. Be practical with me. How does this thing really work? I mean, I'm hearing this lofty language, but talk to me now. And I'm going to tell you, here's how it works. It works, number one, if you want to love others well, right? Love God, love people. If you want to love others well, then what you first need to do is not try harder to love. What you need to do is you need to fix your gaze on God's character of love. You need to see how deeply he loves you well. Intentionally, daily, in the book, where his story is unfolding. And every time you open the book, he's saying something and revealing something personally to you about him in an intimacy of relationship. Yada in the Hebrew and Gnosko in the Greek. It means an intimate knowing. I don't know you. It means we don't have an intimacy of relationship. It's very, that word, Adam knew his wife Eve and they produced a child. Now in marriage, it has a sexual connotation. So God's not applying that part to himself, but he's giving you a window into what he's seeking, what he's always wanted from every human being that breathes, intimacy of relationship. And in that experience, when you come to this book and you see his love unfold from Genesis to Revelation, it's there everywhere. But it's most vividly revealed in the first four books of the New Testament, in the life, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Messiah. an excellent way, embodied and enfleshed. When I look at that cross, I see my value, I see my worth. You need to do that every day when you come to this book. He's everywhere. But then what you want to do, and just add this to your prayer life in your time with Jesus Christ, what you want to do is you want to say, Holy Spirit, because Romans 5.5 5 says the love of God is poured into your heart through the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is wherever Jesus is. It's his job to actually bring Jesus close and reveal him to us and form us into his likeness. And so wherever you're focusing in on Jesus, that's where the Holy Spirit is. That's why when you receive Jesus, you receive the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And not just once when you get baptized. When you look at that parable of the virgins, right? The five foolish and the five wise. A big part of that was that they did not continue with the oil. Are you following me? This, I didn't say this. You're getting this. I didn't say this earlier. So you just get this. It's just Holy Spirit right now. So, so the Holy Spirit takes that love that you see in Jesus on the cross, and he forms it in you in that daily relationship. So every day you should be saying, Holy Spirit, fill me afresh. Form me into the love of God that I see in Christ. This is why I've been so privileged to develop a resource called Life in Christ, Daily Devotional Journal, to help people have this experience practically. I feel so, before anybody starts studying any of the 28, I teach them how to have a relationship. Because then the 28 will make sense. They'll have their context. They'll be beautiful, actually, when you know Jesus. So love, that word gets thrown around a lot, does it not? And so Paul, now knowing that there's a variety of ways that people describe love and there's, there's, there's a lot of misunderstanding of the word love, he now begins to tell us what love looks like, beginning in verse number four. Go with me there. Verse number four, back in 1 Corinthians 13, here's what he says. Love is patient. Love is what? It's patient. Love is kind and is not jealous. Love does not brag and is not arrogant. Love does not act unbecomingly. I'm reading from the NASB. It does not seek its own. In other words, it's not self-seeking or selfish. It's not provoked or easily provoked in some translations. Does not take into account a wrong suffered. Does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. I'm so tempted right here. Because there's a lot of people in our country right now that wants to believe lies. And if I see my Bible when it talks about this country, it seems to talk a lot about deception in Revelation 13, verse 11 to 18. It's important for us to rejoice in the truth, amen? And the truth about God actually is his love, but I'm going to keep moving. Bear all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Why, Paul? Why did, you, why did you actually have us walk through all these attributes of love, right? Well, I believe there's two reasons here in the text. Reason number one. 
This church in Corinth and Greece, at the time that Paul's writing this, were struggling with bearing this fruit. By the way, this is actually coinciding with the fruit of the Spirit there in Galatians 5, 22. He's basically saying the same thing. All of these things are ingredients that when you mix them together, reveals love. The fruit of the Spirit is actually the character of Christ and of the Father. Which leads to why I believe it's his second reason for mentioning these things, verses 4 to verses four to seven, and that is because what he's describing there actually is the character of God, Dane. And that applies to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They have all existed, the all three, the triune God has existed from all eternity past ever in an ebb, ebb and flow of overwhelming, indescribable love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And that was so powerful in experience that they had to create a universe where others with free will could experience it themselves. It was so good. And I want you to try something really quick with me. Please forgive me if it feels a little awkward. Take your finger and go like this. Some people are a little timid. Oh, there we go. There we got some bold saints in the house. Now go right here to your rib and try and wiggle that a little bit. Does that tickle? Of course not, right? But if someone's sitting next to you and, uh, you know, you may not want to do that. Um, or if we do do that, there may be some numbers exchanged later. I don't know. But take your finger, and you just do like that. Someone else does it, and you get a sensation, don't you? It only works when you have someone else do it to you, doesn't it not? It's a tickle, yes? This is how love works. In order for you to experience love, there can't be a single solitary self, just you. There has to be an other. It's self-sacrificing. It's other-centeredness. It's, it's, it's giving. And you need an other for, for you to experience that. That's why God in, him, in his nature is more than one single solitary self, or else we could not say with intelligence, God is love. That's why he's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, because he is love. He's community. He's relationship. And so what Paul is saying here is, listen, family, how do we, what, what, what's the best way, Right? And it's the excellent way of love. And so the excellent way of love, he's saying, preserves our oneness while we serve with a variety of spiritual gifts because it reflects the way of the Godhead. It reflects the way of the Godhead. It's kind of like me and my, my wife, Deidre, that beautiful woman you saw that just, just floated in here from, from the clouds of heaven and sat here with our children. Can all the husbands say amen? Amen. Yeah. Uh, okay, I, I'm preaching a little happy right now because, you know, hallelujah. So, when we love one another, the way we treat each other, the way we love one another, the way we interact with our kids, they start to mimic it. So, so, so we're very, like, lovey-dovey. We like to hug and, 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 and you know, we like to to play and all that kind of stuff. And so they start to do that hugging and, and, and interacting with each other, Right? But then when we say to my son or, or my daughter, we say, hey, no, get down from there. Don't touch that. Don't put that in your mouth. Well, we're finding now that our daughter is saying that to my son who's a little bit older than her. No, 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 Tommy, because what? He's mimicking mom and dad. And listen, parents, you are the primary disciplers of your children. There's a partnership between church, school, and home. But listen, you're the primary disciplers of your, and you embody what you teach. So we can't say do as I say, not as I do. Because the main thing that they're hearing and learning from is who you are. This was discipleship in the first century with Jesus. The rabbi taught the disciples primarily by being. When he said, follow me, he said, you want to see how Sabbath is kept? Watch me. Chill, rest. Come unto me. And I'm going to give you some instructions now to unpack that for you, but it's what you saw in me. That's parenting. That's discipleship, right? Connect, grow, serve, go. So, so what we're seeing here is that if we want to know how to love as a family, and we want to be one, when you look at the Trinity, when you look at the Godhead, listen, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, each are love, and have all willingly, of their own choice, not arbitrarily, have taken on certain roles and functions, even for periods of time, to accomplish things for our benefit, our redemption, our salvation. Amen? Example, Jesus, Philippians 1, Philippians 2, uh, 1 to 11, he humbled himself, right? He became flesh, took on the form of a servant, died the death on the cross. He did that for a time. 
And then he was exalted and went back, right? Equality with the Father, you follow? But he did that willingly. Mm, oh, oh, man, I'm sitting. I got, the, the brother has to preach. I, I, can't, I can't park too much. But the idea here is, because this informs how we should exist in marriage and in the church, but I'm going to stick on church. The idea here is, is that in the church, then therefore we need to be one. And therefore we need to be able to function in our unique gifts, but still be equal, still be, right, loving, right, still be one. One gift, me standing up here is not more important than you and what you're called and gifted to do. You're a minister of the gospel if you've named the name of Jesus Christ, whatever sphere of influence you have. My function and role is just different. And so if we're going to be able to love, we need to love like the Holy Spirit, the Father, and the Son love. Their interworkings within the God and how they relate with us. We're their children. We need to actually follow in their ways, and it's the excellent way of love. But Paul now wants to let us know how long that kind of love will last, because we need something that's going to last. Amen? Go to verse 8. Verse 8, the Bible says, love never what? It never fails. Somebody right now that's right now in a dark place, and you're wondering if God really loves you, you need to come back to verse 8. Because it could, also, it could also be said his love for you never fails. Never. It just keeps going. It will pursue you to the end. Ultimately, it's your choice to respond. But you will never, never fail. But listen, well, listen to what he says here. This is important. But if there are gifts of prophecy, hello, they will be done away. Oh, watch out. If there are tongues, they will cease. If there is knowledge, it will be done away. Uh-oh. For we know in part, this is Paul speaking, we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when the perfect comes, the partial will be done away. And listen, here's that famous verse. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. When I was immature in my walk with Jesus, I was, I was speaking immaturely, I was understanding immaturely, and that's okay because you're a child. But at some point, he says, I, you know, after reasoning like a child, after thinking like a child, he says, but when I became a man, in other words, when I grew up to become an adult spiritually, I did away with childish things. Now, here's where we got the inverse often in the churches. We think that when Paul talks about meat versus milk for little babes spiritually, we think that he's talking about some, some specific things. But how many of you know that the actual meat of the word is the love of God. How, how easy was it? How easy was it for you not to say the wrong thing to somebody this week? How easy was it for you not to engage in that futile debate that was happening online? How easy was it for you not to say the wrong thing to your spouse or your children? How easy is it for you to love? Why did Jesus need to come and cover our sins? Because our sins were a result of lovelessness. Lawlessness is lovelessness, your inability to love. Therefore, that lovelessness needs atoning, which is in itself a work of love and grace. So no matter which way you start, it's going to come right back to love. And so what Paul is saying, listen, family, what he's saying here is, he's saying the excellent way of love it preserves our oneness while serving in a variety of spiritual gifts. Listen, because it, it's eternal reality, love, it's eternal reality will outlast your gifts. Did you hear that? It's eternal, love's eternal reality will outlast your gifts. You may be a good singer. I don't consider myself to be the greatest preacher. I just love Jesus. But I'm telling you, it's functional for a period of time, i.e., until Jesus returns. We're going to probably do some pretty amazing things in glory, but guess what? Right now, Dane, you have an excellent voice. You can play the guitar. I'm blessed. But it will cease. You'll transition into a greater glory. But love will always remain. Therefore, the primary focus of the believer, how do I love well? 
whether they are left or right, red or blue or purple, somewhere in the middle, I love you. I care about you. How's your family? How are your kids? Can I do a well check? You need some food. Does a bill need to be paid? Love one another. So simple, but yet so hard. That's why we need Jesus. It's like if you were one day to wake up and say, you know what, I really need to deepen the quality of my friendships and my relationships. And you say to yourself, you know what, I need to really evaluate these relationships because some of them I think might be depending on me because of what I do for them. And when life hits like a pandemic, crisis reveals character. And it shows you in those type of difficult moments when you've got on your back and on your face who your real friends are. And the relationship needs to be based on knowing you and you knowing me, being with you and me knowing you, right? Being on who we are, we just love each other, right? And it can't be based on what we do for one another. And this is what's coming out in the text right now. Love is what's going to be forever. Get used to loving the person next to you because you're going to actually be with them for eternity. Love now. Love well. Your gifts and what you do for one another or outside in the world will cease. It has an expiration date. Love is the main thing. And it's the hardest thing for us to keep the main thing the main thing. Love is the excellent way. Love went up to a hill called Calvary, embodied in a person. Love stretched his hands wide and allowed us to crucify him. Love went there and said, Father, <laughs> forgive them, for they don't even know what they're doing. They are acting a plum fool right now. If they could see who I really were, they would fall on their knees and ask for mercy. But love got up on the third day and said it was worth it all because if I could show them the excellent way, somebody might come down the aisle and actually give their heart to me. Jesus is the excellent way. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Family, the whole thing from start to finish is about love. Revealed in Jesus, revealed in you through the Holy Spirit. Shared amongst one another. That's it. That's the book. That's eternity. John 17, 3 will say it this way. Jesus in his prayer to the Father as we close. In his prayer to the Father, he says, this is equal. This is eternal life. That they, you, should know you, the true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. He doesn't define eternal life, although this is true as a duration of time or eternity. He defines it in its primary sense of relationship, of knowing God. And to know him is to love him. Are you experiencing that? Is that your reality? And is that so overwhelming and so overflowing and overflow out of your life that it's spilling over into everybody else in your midst? Are they irritating you to the point that you can't love? Really? Do you think that God doesn't get irritated with you? Oh, read the Bible. Oh, yes, he does. He has feelings. But his love never fails. Never. My son right now. Yes, Tommy, come on up, buddy. My son right now, God bless him. My son sometimes does things. We're going to be in the living room right now. Is that all right? My son sometimes does things, you know, as a parent, that disappoint, irritate, frustrate. But there are days where I've had, I've been at my wit's end. And this boy will just walk up to me, not knowing anything I went through that day. And he will, and this is, what I, this is how I describe it. He will hug me with his life. You ever got one of those hugs? And in that moment, I was literally on the verge of tears one day when he did that. And I said, Tommy, no, I didn't even tell him, actually. I felt that the Holy Spirit was saying to me, I'm hugging you through him. One pastor I really appreciate, Joseph Kabazi, said, he said that the church, all right, go to mom. He said that the church is the Holy Spirit with flesh on, with skin on. We can pray, God, be with me right now. Hug me, Lord. Embrace me, Lord. But he needs another person that he's feeling to actually do it. He needs us to love one another so that people can experience tangibly the love 
of God. He's desperate to love through you. It's good that he loves me, but he wants to love through me. He wants to love through you. Who wants to receive that today? You want to stand right now? Is that your prayer? Is that your desire? You want his love to permeate your life? Carry you through a pandemic? And yes, carry you through last day events? Then learn how to love and learn how to love well. Receive his love. You may want to take the next steps. That's on the number right there. You're on online. You want to put something in the chat or you're here. You want to take those next steps. Please see someone here so that we can go ahead and get you on those next steps. But you want to pray now and say, God, I need the excellent way. I need Jesus. Then I invite you to pray now. Father in heaven, it's your breath that's in our lungs. It's your love that, fl that fills our very being. It's your way, it's your love that literally defines what flourishing in life actually looks like. There is nothing, literally nothing greater than your love. We can't exhaust the subject. There are 28 ways in our community of faith that we can talk about the subject because that is our fundamental belief. Love, that's the premise through which we approach any subject. The love of the Father revealed in Christ placed in us through the Spirit. Somebody's receiving that right now, Father, and I pray that you'll seal that decision. Holy Spirit, you are the guarantee, the seal of our guarantee of our inheritance. And you want to spend eternity with us. Father, teach us how to love. This is eternal life. Learning how to love is the quality and we can experience it right now. We thank you in advance. We thank you in advance for what you're going to do in the lives of those who hear the word and apply it by the power of the Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Just remain standing as we sing our closing song. <laughs> great are you, Lord. How many know God is great? His love is just never ending, isn't it? He knows everything we've ever done and still loves us, still died for us, and would do it again if he had to. Thank you, God. Let's lift up a worship to him today. Here we go, church. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore, you restore what did I say? every heart that is broken. again say you give life you give life you are love you are love you bring life you bring light to the darkness you give hope restore you restore every heart every heart that is broken great
Come on, all over this place, let's sing. Come on, sing. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. Come on, let's start to sing it again. All the earth, all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Lift it up. with me father god as we leave this place today we know that your love never leaves us father all we have to do is turn seek you first god and watch all the things we need in this life be added unto us but god like my brother cj just said that all the things we know here will fail but what will never fail is your love help us to focus on that today God with all the stuff that's happening all the rising gas prices and, and inflation and all the rulings and just all this stuff that makes us and gives us anxiety Lord help us to turn our focus back to you to seek you first and your love and your righteousness and everything 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 we need will be added unto us help us to do that today and then to share that love with someone else, Father, so we can just bring as many people with us to heaven as we could possibly do and, and just have a big party with you, Lord, someday. We can't wait. And this is our prayer. In Jesus' name, let the church of God say amen, amen and amen. Happy Sabbath, church. As you go in God today, you can, you can hang out with us a little bit, and we're going to sing some. Hey, I'm, I'm, oh, okay, come on up. No, I'm not going to sing. Guys, I just got a reminder for you as we talk about love and that, that expression of love being shown through us. If you want to be part of joining us as we show the love of Jesus to this city, on, all right, yeah. stop at that table out there. Sign up. We want to be real to these people and show them Jesus. So I'm asking you, sign up outside, get involved in our health fair, July 9th training, July 23rd. I'll give it back to the singer. Amen. Amen. You can sing too. We are inviting anyone who has that spiritual gift to come on up with us. I know my brother CJ has that spiritual gift of singing. I, I'm not, I'm not going to let him off the hook. Where's Deidre? She's somewhere, but if you could sing with us, come on down CJ, man. Come on. He's, he's drinking water. He's, he's, 
ready. Come on, let's do Great Are You Lord. Come on. Come on, CJ, man. Yeah. I listen to my people, they're, they're telling me, no, we just did this song, why are we doing it again? <laughs> CJ, um, we're gonna recruit you. No, th don't look at me like that. We're gonna make you <laughs> sing this new song that we just did today, is that all right? That's all right, it was all right. good. Let's, let's do it, let's do it. Sorry, we're switching it up. You have made me glad. All right, if you guys, if you guys know the song, come on, you can, you can put your hands together. But if you know the song, join along, sing it with us. Brother Keith, I need your movement, man. <laughs> praise God, praise God. The song says, I'll give thanks to you, Lord. Come on, let's sing it, family. I'll give thanks to you, Lord. And sing praise to your name, O Most High. I'll declare your love in the morning and your faithfulness by night. For you, O oh Lord, have made me glad. I will sing for joy at the works of your hand and rejoice in what you have done. I'll give thanks to you, Lord. To you, Lord. And sing praise to your name, O Most High. I'll declare your love in the morning and your faithfulness by night. For you, O oh Lord, have made me glad. I will sing for joy at the works of your hand and rejoice in what you have done. And rejoice in what you have done. I can rest, I won't be defeated, for you are the strength of my life. For you, oh Lord, have made me glad, I will sing for joy at the works of your hand, and rejoice in what you have done, and rejoice in what you have done. You have made 
All right. You guys look like you want to sing again. Hi, thank you for watching our live stream today. We hope that you were blessed and enjoyed today's service. Until we stream live again, I'd like to encourage you to visit PlantationSDA.tv for more uplifting content. If you have a prayer request, please drop by PlantationSDA.org and let us know how we can pray for you. And if you're in the Plantation, Florida area, please stop by and say hello. See, See you soon. soon.